Later this year, the roller coaster gods will bless us with Wildcat's Revenge, an all new roller coaster set to open this summer at Hershey Park. Well, it's essentially all new, but it uses a majority of the former concrete footings and a good amount of the wooden superstructure from Wildcat, which was a former wooden roller coaster built by Great Coasters International, or GCI, in 1996. Wildcat's Revenge is all thanks to Rocky Mountain Construction, or RMC, who have become quite well known for turning aging wooden roller coasters into steel tracked monsters monstrosities that push all sorts of boundaries. In this video, we'll be taking a nerdy look at just how RMC has been taking the structure of Wildcat and revamping it for Wildcat's Revenge. There's some interesting things going on that I really like, and I'll also update you on some facts about the ride recently shared by Hershey Park at a construction tour. Before we get started, if you could give this video a like, that would be greatly appreciated as that helps the channel greatly against the YouTube algorithm. Alright, let's dig in. Now I won't be detailing much about the construction progress itself, but more so how RMC appears to be reutilizing Wildcat's original wooden superstructure. Ever since Wildcat's Revenge was announced, I've been very curious how RMC would support it, especially for something like the underflip, as the element uses structure from Wildcat's original curving first drop. So the structure was really meant to handle a train starting with minimal speed, meaning not much force was applied to the taller part of the superstructure. Whereas with the underflip, trains will be traveling at high speeds even at the top of the element, meaning they will start the right hand drop at a much higher rate of speed, all within the confines of the original drop. And let's not forget that RMC swing axle trains that are being used on Wildcat's Revenge are quite heavy. All of this together, it means a lot more force will be exerted on the upper half of the wooden superstructure compared to before. When RMC converted Mean Streak at Cedar Point into Steel Vengeance, the ride faced a wide variety of structural issues, many that Cedar Point is still working to correct today. And since then, RMC seems to have gotten a good grasp of how to handle the extra weight of their swing axle trains, and newer RMC coasters like Iron Gwazi at Busch Gardens Tampa feature a large amount of steel support columns to assist the wooden superstructure, primarily with lateral loads. And so far with Wildcat's Revenge, RMC seems to be taking an interesting approach that has me pretty excited. Excited. Now this might not excite you as much as it excites me, but keep in mind, I'm just a nerd with a civil engineering degree. But from what I can tell, there is plenty of double reinforcement in many parts of the wooden superstructure, with a purposeful but also subtle blending of steel support columns. Before I dig in further, let me detail the basic components of a wood coaster structure. Wood coasters are built using bents, which are vertical sections of reinforced structure that are then connected laterally and diagonally to other vertical bents. At the bottom of a bent are footings, or concrete foundations foundations that are built into the ground. Extending vertically from the footings are bent posts. Connecting the two bent posts are lateral members called cords. Then connected diagonally between the bent posts and cords are cross bracing members. At the top of the bent is a larger vertical member called a ledger that supports the ride's track. As far as lateral support goes, there's a few ways to do that with many wooden coasters featuring wider bents like such, where Wildcat was originally built with batter braces like so. Think of these as diagonally placed bent posts with a few connections horizontally to the main bent, and then looking sideways at the structure, connecting each bent to the next bent are lateral members called ribbons that run perpendicular to the bent posts. In addition to the ribbons are diagonal cross bracing members that also connect bents to one another. What we're seeing a lot of in Wildcat's Revenge is double reinforcement. In all of the new structure built on top of Wildcat's original first drop, there's both double cords and double cross bracing members within the bents. You can see two of these at each location, whereas the original Wildcat only had one at each location. And you can see that through all of the ride's original structure of the first drop. Double reinforcement like such is common on rides like Ghost Rider at Knott's Berry Farm, which was built stiffer to handle California's earthquakes, or prefabricated wooden coasters built by Intamin, such as El Toro at Six Flags Great Adventure. Looking further, RMC has also placed two bent posts sandwiched together in the upper portion portions of the superstructure, where the steel ledgers that hold the track meet the bent posts. These double bent posts are even bolted together, and this will greatly help this section of superstructure handle the high forces exerted on them from the steel ledgers. And so far, you'll find this all over the ride. At both the top of the underflip, the bottom of the underflip as the train heads into the next airtime hill, and even on the bends that support the pullout of the first drop. It's also on the structure of the wave turn built over the bottom of the underflip. I'll have to analyze other newer RMC coasters, but the only other wood coaster I know of that does double bent post is Ghost Rider in lower sections of its superstructure. Then for lateral support, RMC has added a second bent post to these batter braces here from the original Wildcat. These strengthened batter braces will help to support this cantilevered section of structure that supports the 270 degree roll of the underflip. 
By cantilevered, it means that this section of structure is unsupported at its furthest end and relies on the structure to the left for rigidity. And I'm not sure if I can recall another wood coaster with a cantilevered section of structure. So I find this fascinating and I'm thrilled to see it in action with trains barreling through this section of ride. Then for the rest of the underflip, RMC left many of Wildcat's original batter braces on the outside of the element as is. But there's a lot of changes on the inside of the element. RMC has built additional wood superstructure as well as steel support columns to provide lateral support. To add to the original batter braces on the inside of the turn, RMC have added a second set of wooden batter braces elevated over the originals, allowing them to connect to the steel ledgers at the top of the element. Then connecting the original batter braces to the new batter braces are double cords. These new wooden batter braces appear to have been built on every other bent. And then on the bends where wooden batter braces weren't added, steel support columns or I guess steel batter braces were added instead. They begin at the peak of the hill and continue through the curving drop, with steel support columns even present at the bottom, as well as wooden batter braces that extend far from the main superstructure. There's also new wooden batter braces on the outside of the element towards the bottom. There's even a big difference in the ribbons holding together the bent in the new portion of structure compared to the original GCI structure of Wildcat. In the original structure, notice how the ribbons, which connect the bents laterally from one to another, are perfectly in line with each other. It's a much more elegant look, but it means a ribbon only covers half a bent post, as the other half of the bent post is covered by the next ribbon, meaning less overall connections between the bent post and a ribbon. And then on the new structure, each ribbon connects to each bent post over the full width of the bent post, which is why the ribbons are stacked above or below each other as you move from left to right. This allows for more connections between each ribbon and bent post, meaning a stronger overall structure. You'll see the same thing occurring on the structure of El Toro at Great Adventure. Now according to the recent construction tour, the underflip is now complete. Although I'm curious if RMC will go back and also double reinforce the original structure of the first drop, that sits below the added structure of the underflip. But as it currently stands, I love the clear contrast between the original and new structure, as they have two completely different styles, and you can quickly distinguish new from old. GCI really does have a way of making beautiful wooden structures, so that's something nice to see sticking around. Plus, it really highlights how Wildcat's Revenge is really utilizing the original Wildcat, as well as where the ride path of Wildcat was compared to Wildcat's Revenge. I really hope the wooden catwalks of the original first drop remain as is for this purpose. But overall, the structural design and build style will probably fare much better than something like this high turn on Steel Vengeance underneath its lift hill, which has faced a long list of structural issues. The blending of steel support columns within the wooden superstructure is also a nice touch, and helps make the structure look more wooden overall. And just some other news about the ride, in a recent construction tour, Hershey Park confirmed once again that Wildcat's Revenge will operate for the park's winter event. Christmas Candy Lane. To achieve this, the ride will be able to operate at temperatures as low as 32 degrees Fahrenheit, and wheel heaters will be placed in the station to keep the wheels of the trains nice and toasty. The coaster can also operate in winds as high as 45 miles per hour, which is quite high for a coaster of its size. The ride's new storage barn, being built to the left of the original station where trains are stored when not in use, will also be where trains are rebuilt during the off-season. And during Christmas Candy Lane, Wildcat's Revenge will operate with two of its three trains while the third train undergoes its yearly refurbishment, the same as Candemonium. Then during the off-season, the other two trains will undergo their refurbishment, allowing the ride to reopen the next spring with all three trains available. And as it's previously been mentioned, the ride will feature double-sided lockers, similar to Velocicoaster at Islands of Adventure or many other rides outside the United States. Before boarding, riders will place their belongings in a locker, and then head upstairs to the load platform empty of all loose articles. This will help speed the operations of the coaster immensely. Then when riders return to the separate unload station, they'll exit and head back downstairs where they'll be on the opposite side of the lockers to grab their belongings. Now I'm very curious if this means phones and other hard and heavy loose articles will be banned from the ride entirely. This would probably be the right choice considering just how wild RMC coasters are, and all riders as well as bystanders in the surrounding area would be safer if riders on board have no loose articles on them whatsoever. Overall, this is a great move on Hershey Park's end, and I'm thrilled that more parks in the United States are adopting this locker style. Anyway, that will do it for this video. I love structures, so nerding out about them is really fun to me. So I hope you found this video as enjoyable as I did. Personally, I'm more excited for Wildcat's Revenge than RE Force 1 at Fun Spot Atlanta. The layout of Wildcat's Revenge looks to feature a larger variety of elements, which I'm a fan of, but RE Force 1 will slap of course too. That ride will probably have a lot more airtime, but the layout just seems 
seems more basic to me. Be sure to comment below your thoughts on Wildcat's Revenge, like the video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to see more content like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.